Old Florida has a unique attitude and personality all of her very own. Hers is a wild and free spirit that truly cannot be found anywhere else in the world. Old Florida is beauty, mystery, and enchantment. Why, she is pure Southern charm and embodies a character of community and a sense of place. Yet today, Old Florida is vanishing, possibly becoming just a memory herself. The good news is, the feeling of romance in Old Florida can still be found if you know where to look. Come along with us on our search as we find interesting and insightful people, places, and historic landscapes of the real Old Florida. Good afternoon, friends, and welcome back to another episode of The Real Old Florida. I'm really glad you could join us today, and I'm sure you will be too. Today, we are in a place that not many people have heard of, except for the people who grew up here. This is a little town called Lake Lindsay. There's not much here, a little cemetery, a beautiful lake, a little mall, and a whole lot of history. In 1842, there were some pioneers that had come to the Arnando Spanish Land Grant, and they had come down from North Carolina, South Carolina, Georgia, Alabama, and they had stayed in this land grant. Well, the pioneering spirit got the best of them, and they just couldn't stay there. So they picked up all their stuff and their families, and they put it in a wagon train, and they headed south. They ended up in McKeithen Lake, which is just over here to our northeast over here, and uh, they put the wagons around there in a circle and that's where they lived until they would come up here to the hill, they would plant their fields and build their houses while they were staying down there and when it was finished, they all came over and they began this little community of Lake Lindsay. Now around this time, the end of the Second Seminole War was starting and the government didn't have enough manpower to continue to push the Indians either out west or further and further south and inland to the Everglades. So what they did was they offered the pioneers that had come to the Arnando Spanish Land Grant and others the opportunity to homestead property. They could come down here, find property, as long as they cultivated 10 acres for five years, they built a house and they helped to serve in the militia against the Indians, then they, at the end of that five years, were awarded 160 acres on a homestead. Now that was a pretty good um, incentive to come, and the, of course they were hoping that the, the pioneers would help to push the Indians out, and that's exactly what they did. Now this beautiful town of Lake Lindsay, this little town, was named after this beautiful lake behind me. This is Lake Lindsay. Now Lake Lindsay itself was named after a colonel in the, the Seminole Wars that was here. His name was William Lindsay, and he was in charge of the Alabama volunteers in this area. So he actually was shot with an Indian by an Indian with an arrow, he made it somehow over here to a log cabin by the name of Mr. Lewis owned, and he tried to get him back to health. Unfortunately, Colonel Lindsay passed away from his wounds, and some people say that he's still buried here, but that hasn't been proven yet. Right behind Lake Lindsay, if you can see, the last episode we were at Chinsegut Hill, and that, friends, is the back of Chinsegut Hill. So we're just a little bit north of Chinsegut Hill, and we're actually about seven miles east, southeast of the center of the geographical center point of Florida, which is just northeast a little bit. Today, friends, we are here to honor those hardy pioneers who came here and lived off the land and loved the land and made families and grew crops and churches and communities. And this became their place. And it was their place so much that they decided to spend eternity here. So next, what we're gonna do is we're going to go across the street and we're going to try to scare up some of the spirits that might be over there. And I'm also gonna give you an inside look at some of the faces and the stories behind some of the tombstones. The people that started Lake Lindsay also were very instrumental in starting the state of Florida because they were here before it was even a state. Florida was still just a territory. So come along with us, friends, and listen to the stories and see the people who made this what it is for now, from then, and for their ancestors. The Hernando Farmer's Market and Aunt Martha's Produce, providing the area's greatest selection of farm fresh products with friendly, old-fashioned customer service. The Hernando Farmer's Market in Hernando offers fresh vegetables and fruit picked daily from across the street, grown naturally and pesticide-free by the Path Homeless Shelter. 
wake up every morning to the delectable smell of our organic coffee beans and fresh bread and muffins prepared by Cusano Bakery. Experience the delicious and rich taste of homemade butter and pure cow and goat's milk with the cream on top. The farmer's market also carries an incredible quality of wild-caught seafood and certified Angus meats. When you visit the Hernando Farmer's Market, you'll find out why. Pick fresh today is our favorite saying. And when you're in the historic village of Floral City, no trip would be complete without stopping at Aunt Martha's Produce. For over 11 years, Aunt Martha and her family have been keeping the tradition of selling the best and local favorites, from mouth-watering fruits and vegetables to old-fashioned Amish favorites like jams, jellies, cheese, and noodles. Our specialty sodas are perfectly refreshing on those hot summer days, and we're always serving up fresh hot batches of Florida's comfort food, boiled peanuts. Make an appointment now to experience your slice of the real old Florida by taking a relaxing and informative history tour of the iconic Avenue of the Oaks. At Aunt Martha's, you come in as a stranger, but when you leave, you're family. The Hernando Farmer's Market and Aunt Martha's, providing you and your family with the best in local produce in West Central Florida. Welcome back, friends. As you can see, we have moved across the street and we are in one of my favorite places, which is a cemetery. And I wanna just tell you that this stone right here, she was the very first person buried in the cemetery. Her name was Nancy Mayo and she was Anderson Mayo's mother. Now, Anderson Mayo, if you look over here, is the one that owned Snow Hill and Tiger Tail Hill at the time it was called and all of the area around here. As a matter of fact, it was said that he owned so much land, you could walk from Homosassa to Bayport and never leave his property. So he's the one who actually gave this property and donated it when his mother died, and she was the first person who was buried here. This is one of Mr. Snow's great grandfathers, and uh, we're gonna talk about Mr. Snow here in a little bit and let you know, but he's got about six or seven great grandfathers in this cemetery, so um, there's deep, deep roots here in Lake Lindsay. Another beautiful thing, in my opinion, about the cemetery is it's not only for what was the white settlers back in the day, but it was also for the black settlers as well. And if you notice, there's no fence. There's nothing to separate where they were. They were treated and loved just like they were family when they were here. So this is their resting place. This one itself um, actually is Fielder Harris, who we learned quite a bit about when we did Chinsegat Hill. That's where he had passed away. And his son Raymond is here. And on the other side is the first African-American person, Mr. Washington, George Washington to be exact, was to be buried here um, in the cemetery. And he actually was Aunt Lizzie's husband. So if you notice then it goes down and we've got the Mayos and the Browns and uh, the Snows and the Headaches and the Priests. And this whole area is what it was back in the old days when Lake Lindsay was just a baby. Friends, there's a little story that I want to tell you about that goes along with this gentleman here. His name is Nathaniel B. for Brown Mayo. And he was actually, his mother's name was Aunt Esther, and she was a domestic slave of Anderson Mayo when he lived in South Carolina. So when they had come to Florida, Anderson Mayo and Mr. Edrington came to Florida to buy the property that's all here, Chensicott Hill, and what they bought in the early 1800s. On the way home, Mr. Mayo got a message that his domestic slave, Aunt Esther, and her son were being used as field hands. Well, that just wasn't gonna work. He wasn't gonna do that. So he left where he was, he went there, he picked them up, he brought them back, and Esther and Brown Mayo, Nathaniel Brown Mayo, lived here and were part of Mr. Mayo's family for eons and eons. There's actually, he left him a piece of land just north of here, up by the uh, actual center point, the geographical center point of the state. Um, he left him 40 some acres and that is a place called Russell Hill and there is a um, cemetery back in there and there used to be a church and it's a really really nice place so um, it wasn't just that these people were their slaves and that they worked for them they were their families and they loved them very much now friends I know that most of you know is who this is and most of you that are going to watch this show that are from Citrus County and surrounding areas are probably related to this gentleman. This is Mr. James C. Priest, and he was the first sheriff of Citrus County. He was also the one that was instrumental in stealing the courthouse from Manfield and taking it to Inverness. So, uh, and then when he passed away, 
um, another person in his family had taken over and uh, the family has continued on and if you are in you are born in this area you are related to a priest I was born in Ohio I'm still related to priests so he's a wonderful man and he's left a great great legacy for all of the people that come after him now while we're here I want to show you this is his wife Cordelia and what I want to show you is down here in the front you can see they call this an iron cross and this meant that he was in the Confederate States of America now I will tell you that in this cemetery there have more Confederate soldiers buried than anywhere else in the state and that was taken a few years ago so um, we're really proud of that we're proud of our heritage and we're really grateful that all of you have stayed around so that we can help you with your history Okay, friends, I just wanted to show you this one real quick. This is um, the graves of a Mr. Hart and a Mr. Chapman. And uh, they obviously, as you can see by the iron crosses and things, they were in the Civil War. Um, you don't see many of these in Florida. You'll see the, the concrete around the edges to like keep it off a little bit, but not many of these. And this is very ornate and uh, something that somebody put a lot of time into and they've kept it up over the years. So this is how much their heritage meant to them and it's how much their heritage should mean to us today. Another thing I wanted to point out to you friends, of course, we're talking about so many people and there's over 3,500 people so far, at least in the cemetery, but that's not all of them. There's some here that had wooden markers or didn't have any markers at all and something has been washed away. Um, here's a couple actually, and it's actually marked unknown. They don't know who was buried here, but they, there are two people here. Um, there's some that don't have any marker whatsoever. Um, now you have to remember that in the 60s and 70s, from what Mr. Snow said, the hippie generation kind of took a toll on some of the cemeteries and things. And also remember in this area, this was open range for cattle. So a lot of this went, might have been damaged back in the day from the cattle roaming through here before they were put into fences. So it's very important to remember that just when you go to a cemetery, it's just not the people where you see the stones or the biggest stones. Sometimes there's people right under your feet that you don't even know about. Friends, I wanted to let you know and take a special moment to dedicate this entire program and actually most of my programs because most of the information I get is from this gentleman here. The funny story about this gentleman, Mr. Bobby Snow, is that I never met him in person until the day of his funeral. And I have come to know him through working on his history work that he did. Much thanks to Betty Kaysen, his wife, his beautiful wife and her son Steve for letting me work off of Mr. Snow's work and he has such a huge accumulation of family in the cemetery and he was the family historian. So he's got a USF collection of the history here from Chensicott Hill to Snow Hill to Lake Lindsay Cemetery. So I urge you to check that out if you can. You know, there's people that touch your life when they come into your life and sometimes those people aren't even alive. I have really gotten to know Mr. Snow and who he was as a person and his loves and his likes and his dislikes through his history and through his family. And I can't tell you the unending gratitude I have to this gentleman and all of his family, including his beautiful wife, Miss Betty Snow, for giving me the opportunity to love this and to share it just like he did. Sometimes other people can see a spark in you that you don't see. And Mr. Snow was one of those people. So I thank you very much, Mr. Snow. Friends, I just wanted you to know that there's a little bit deeper history to this beautiful area other than just our pioneers and when they were here. There's names in this cemetery like Jennings, who was the first governor from, and the only governor from Hernando County for Florida. We have priests and Giatos and Jenkins and Snows and Casins and Rookses and Kilgores and the names just go on and on and on. But besides those names that are related to all of you, this, we found out in 1920, was actually an Indian burial ground. This was a mound, an Indian mound. They found this when they were looking, they were doing the road in 1920. They found some different things, uh, Indian artifacts when they pulled it up. They think it's possible it might be prehistoric because there was absolutely no metal or anything of, uh, uh, you know, today's stuff in there. So they're thinking it was prehistoric. Still has not been proven, however, there's a personal account that tells of a local legend or lore that when Mr. Snow was here one day uh, mowing the grass and things, a carload of people pulled up over here. They got out and they proceeded to do an Indian ceremonial dance around this mound that I'm standing on.
turns out, when he came over and asked them, this is not only what we thought was an Indian mound, it's very possible that this is Chief Tigertail's burial spot. So we don't know who actually was here before them, but we do know that this land was important to the Indians, and it was definitely important and instrumental to our pioneering forefathers that came before us. This is a wonderful place, and this is just one more leg of a history that has yet to be told. I want to make sure I say an extra thank you to all of the families um, and, and the families of these people who are already here at the cemetery who was very gracious to send in their information and their pictures. Um, Kendra Siddig was one of those ladies and uh, her father was Dr. Mr. Langworthy. So this is one of the most beautiful eye-catching um, stones here, but I'm very grateful that not only do I love this stuff, but then it, it, it comes to you guys and you give back. And, that's what it's all about. We all have to work together to bring this history into one full picture. So I'm very grateful to all of these people and to all of their ancestors and family that are still here. Next, I want you to stay with us because we're gonna go check out the Lake Lindsay Mall. It's true, every town has to have a mall, even Lake Lindsay. The Hernando Farmer's Market and Aunt Martha's Produce, providing the area's greatest selection of farm fresh products with friendly old fashioned customer service. The Hernando Farmer's Market in Hernando offers fresh vegetables and fruit picked daily from across the street, grown naturally and pesticide-free by the Path Homeless Shelter. Wake up every morning to the delectable smell of our organic coffee beans and fresh bread and muffins prepared by Cusano Bakery. Experience the delicious and rich taste of homemade butter and pure cow and goat's milk with the cream on top. The Farmer's Market also carries an incredible quality of wild-caught seafood and certified Angus meats. When you visit the Hernando Farmer's Market, you'll find out why. Pick fresh today is our favorite saying. And when you're in the historic village of Floral City, no trip would be complete without stopping at Aunt Martha's Produce. For over 11 years, Aunt Martha and her family have been keeping the tradition of selling the best and local favorites, from mouth-watering fruits and vegetables to old-fashioned Amish favorites like jams, jellies, cheese, and noodles. Our specialty sodas are perfectly refreshing on those hot summer days, and we're always serving up fresh hot batches of Florida's comfort food, boiled peanuts. Make an appointment now to experience your slice of the real old Florida by taking a relaxing and informative history tour of the iconic Avenue of the Oaks. At Aunt Martha's, you come in as a stranger, but when you leave, you're family. The Hernando Farmer's Market and Aunt Martha's, providing you and your family with the best in local produce in West Central Florida. Well, here we are, friends. I promised you that we were gonna go to the mall and here it is. This, my friends, is the Lake Lindsay Mall. And you have no idea the goodies that are inside. So we're gonna go in, we're gonna see if they have those cute little bottles of Coke we used to have. We're gonna talk to the owners and see some of the history of this beautiful little store. Come with us, come on. friends. Well, the first thing I always do when I come in here is I walk right over here and in this cute little cooler right here, see this? They've got baby cokes. And since I was a little girl and the first time my aunt ever brought us to this store, I always got a baby coke when I came to Lake Lindsay Mall. So hey, just who we're looking Hi. for. How you doing? Good. How are you? I'm good. Good to see you. This is Bridie and she and her husband are the owners of the store here now, Lake Lindsay Mall. And so we get to ask you a little bit about some history here. Great. I How love long it. has it been here? Um, the building was originally built back in the 20s and um, it was owned by the Jones family. It was someone's house years ago before it even became a store. Yeah. And um, when the husband passed away, they, uh, the sons came in and decided to turn it into a store for their mom. So they moved the original building back away from the road a little bit. Mm -hmm. Turned it into a store in the front, and then her house was in the back, where actually she had her children in the back. Um, really? Somebody said they believed the deli area was actually a bedroom back then, where one of the babies was born. That is great. Yes. That is great. You don't hear that kind of stuff all no, the time. No, <laughs> you don't. And I love it here because so many people come in and tell me the history when they were children, people who are in their 60s and 70s. And I mean, there's so many of them that are still here. There That's are. the thing about this area. They, they were born here, they lived here, they grew up here, but they either came back yes. or they're still here. And that's, an ex that's like a, a perspective you don't get from anybody else except who lived it. Yes. You know? So yeah. It is really well, that's neat. great. 
Well, now you have this wonderful, besides having the cool store with all of the amazing things, um, like I said, we always say this is the Lake Lindsay Mall, and people laugh, but it really is. You guys don't have like a fast food restaurant or anything within like, what, 15 no. miles? Yes, yes. Back in, in any town. direction? Yeah. So the, the fact that not only do they have a deli, but they have a deli that will make your tongue slap your brains out, it's some of the best food you've ever had. Best Cubans, best Rubens I've ever had in my life. So um, make sure that you come in and you talk to the girls, and when you want lunch or something, and you belly up over there and they'll take care of you, I'm sure. And don't forget to get yourself a little cook. So there's, if I'm not mistaken, there's a winery in the area now? There is, right down the road off of Snow Hill, about two miles down the road, mm -hmm. uh, Sparacia and Witherell. Okay, cool. And they have amazing wine. Love it. We sell it here also, good. but we do encourage people to go down there and do some wine tasting. Right, right. That's good. Yeah, I didn't even know. I saw it yet the other day. I didn't even realize there was one out here. So oh, yes. it's coming amazing. Up. Yes. And a ranch with with animals and something. A farm or something is out here too. Right across the street over mm -hmm. here. Yes, and a bunch of people have told me about that too. So that is. this area might be out in the middle of nowhere as far as most people are concerned but it's nice and quiet and country, just the way we like it here. It is, and we have a lot of people who come out on motorcycles because they like the back roads and come by and visit. Yes, and, and this area, Floral City, um, all these back roads through Hernando County, absolutely yeah. wonderful for motorcycles. So they're deaf, and bicycles. We've got lots of bike trails now that are we all do. connecting We do, we had them up. all here this morning, the bicycle guys. Yep, yep. Every Saturday. So, well, I just wanna thank you so much well, for you letting so us come in and reminisce a little bit and, well, and get some of the history it. and I'm really glad that we could tell our friends out there about your place and when you come in you make sure that you tell them that Shannon sent you and uh, that you saw them on the real old Florida. Okay. Thank you. So, thank you so much and I wish you guys all the luck in the world. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. Friends, I want to thank you so much for coming today and enjoying Lake Lindsay with us and seeing it from our perspective and from a history perspective. This lake was not only a source of pleasure for the people who lived here before, it was also a source of food and a source of enjoyment and fishing. There's so many things that are in this lake. It even says that possibly there might be a couple of cannons down there. You never know, but we love to hear the local lore and see if maybe we can't find out if it's true or not. So come back and join us again for the next episode, as we always love to have you here with us when we're finding out about the real old Florida.